hey guys welcome back to another video today i've got something a little bit special okay so recently montoya made a video kind of talking about this game called star atlas is dead because of you know everything that happened with ftx and the you know uh the collapse of the crypto coin apparently the studio behind star atlas was heavily invested in ftx and they lost a bunch of money so it's been a dire situation for crypto in general like 2022 was just like a terrible year for crypto and you know i'm not a financial advisor and i'm not i'm never going to give you guys financial advice on this channel but a lot of people don't like crypto because of all the scams that's been going on and i can totally understand that uh you know there was at one point a lot you know some people were saying that you know star citizens an nft thing and that's just not the case <laughs> like um I, i'm not saying that cig is never gonna sell nfts i just don't think they have utility right now and i think that you know if anything obviously i think the people at cig are keeping an eye on the situation but i don't think they need to get involved with that right now i think it's just major liability and um yeah these this uh team behind star atlas to all the way in you know they've raised a bunch of money when they first launched and announced the product i think they um i think they raised like a hundred million dollars or something like that so that gives them a pretty long one way um but apparently a lot of this money was lost when ftx collapsed now they've developed a lot uh since then i really haven't been following the project that much but apparently they released different uh they released a bunch of ships first then they released different modules um then they had this hangar module that i saw others um star citizen content creator creators cover and um it didn't look too bad i mean this game is being made in unreal engine 5 so it's you know it's a decent looking game but it's really going to come down to the gameplay at the end of the day uh star citizen is very uh open-ended it really lets you do whatever you want it's not limiting in any way and even though a lot of people want to say that Star Citizen is a very expensive game, Star Citizen is being run by whales. Um, at the end of the day, you know, you can get in for 40 bucks and you can experience anything that somebody who spent a hundred thousand dollars on this game experiences. And that's huge. You know, you did there isn't that crazy high barrier to entry with Star Citizen, and it makes it accessible for a lot of people. And there's not a whole lot of recurring costs yes you can keep spending more money you can keep upgrading do this that and the other but once you play your 40 dollars and you get and you get in the game that's it now right now there are, are various wipes so you lose progress but once there's less wipes and we have persistence buying a 40 dollar starter package and just keeping that 40 dollar start, starter package will be more viable right now it's not super viable because any progress you make you know gets erased when there's wipes so it doesn't really incentivize people to do that but once the game does become more persistent it's going to make sense to buy a 40 dollar package and you know just stick with that and, and you know maybe you buy a couple skins maybe you buy you know maybe there's some more micro transactions i don't know but um you you know most people aren't you know gonna go out there and, and buy some seventeen hundred dollar ship and that's the kind of the thing with star atlas that i'm was kind of sketched out about was that you know they had you know some million dollar ships hundred thousand dollar ships ships are very expensive and i i kind of said in the beginning i didn't say it on this channel I, you know i said it on other star citizen youtube creators discord uh if they had just started with cheaper ships i feel like they would be in you know some real competition with star citizen right now because star citizen you know they do sell two thousand dollar ships and i i think if star atlas kind of hovered around that mark five ten grand i feel like there would have been you know a much larger boom and secondly i feel like there would have been a whole lot more you know money to make for people investing in the project now if you buy a one hundred thousand dollar nft spaceship there's no way for there's nowhere for that to go but down that's not going up in price <laughs> you you because strictly because of the audience okay 
the number of people who are interested in spending that kind of money on a niche product like that is very limited. So if you target the ceiling of those players' budgets right from the get-go, there's nowhere to go. Let's say I, I release a, a supercar and there are 100 people in the world who can afford a million dollar supercar. Let's say I make 100 of those. All those people buy those cars. You know, wh where's the price going to go? Now, if there are like 10,000 people who want to buy the supercars and uh, the, the price will obviously go up because there's more people who want to buy the supercars than there is supercars. But right now, this it, it it didn't start off with that kind of demand. It There was a boom. And that's really just because of people who want to be early adopters. They want to get into the project and say, hey, I was there day one. Because a lot of people also feel like day one people have the most to gain. And it's even true in Star Citizen with people who uh, bought the Banu Merchantman at like $250. And now the Banu Merchantman is like $650 or something like that. Or, you know, people who bought, uh, you know, Saber Comet and now that ship's going for like, I don't know, $1,000, something crazy. But that's one of the benefits is that for a lot of Star Citizen players, like, I went to look at it the other day. You know the Foundation Festival. Okay, so in Star Citizen, there's a holiday called Foundation Festival, where it's essentially a promotion to encourage new players to join the project. And they had ships on sale with a special quote-unquote rare skin. And the ship was called the 100i, and it was, I think it was like 50 bucks on sale at the time. And it came with the free skin and it was the only way you can get it. But you had to use real money. I didn't get it. You know, it was whatever. Um, but I went on there the other day to look at it because somebody was talking about rare skins in Star Citizen. And I, make, I might make a video about it. Uh, you know, rare skins and different rare items in Star Citizen. I don't know yet. But I, I went to do a little bit of research about that. And I went on the gray market to look at how much the Foundation Festival startup packages are going on the secondhand market. Those ships are going for like almost 200 bucks now. It's crazy. And that's the thing. If you make something that is real, if there's a high demand for it, and if you set the price at low from the start, it's going to go up. And so that's something you want to invest in. You want to invest in something that is in demand. You want to invest in something that has a utility. You want to invest in something that has a low starting price. And then it's, it's going to explode from there. But if you invest in something that's no utility, um, it has a high starting price and it is, and it's very niche, you're going to lose money. <laughs> that's just a fact. Again, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but to me, that's just a recipe to lose. Now, it doesn't say anything about the game. The, again, uh, I'm just talking strictly about the, the NFT situation here. The game might be fun. And that's exactly what we're going to find out here. So this video that we're going to watch here, this is the gameplay manual. Star Atlas is looking to actually launch the, the, the alpha. So... So we're going to find out how you actually play the game and, and what goes on. So this is, um, I forget the name of this. What's the, the, this guy's channel again? The Metaverse Explore. Cool guy. You know, let me subscribe. I'm subscribed to him on a, another YouTube account, but I've seen a couple of his videos before. Cool guy. You know, he's diehard supporter of the project. I respect it. I'm like that with Star Citizen. And, you know, if I was day one, we start Alice, you know, obviously, you know, you got, you got a lot of money invested in the project. <laughs> you want to see it survive. And I've got a lot of money invested in Star Citizen. You know, I'm not the type of person to just sit here and talk bad about Star Citizen, but I'm not against it. You know, I'm a realist, you know, CIG's done some messed up stuff, some stuff that I don't agree with, obviously. That doesn't mean that I don't want the project to succeed. That doesn't mean I don't, you know, think Star Citizen can make the game. It doesn't think I don't think the project's going to get released. I do believe that the project's going to get released. It's going to be huge. It's going to be great. All that stuff. I do believe that. But, of course, there are bumps along the road. And 
the same thing could po probably be said for Star Atlas. You know, they had a rocky beginning. The market is crazy right now. They're not in control of that. You know, that's not Star Atlas going out here saying, okay, we'll scam out. It's going to take your money. No, they made a hundred million dollars and they are actually making a game. And I commend them for that. You know, they could have easily just been like, oh, okay, well, you have NFTs. That we you have NFTs and we released a store and then we released this little staking game that you can do. That's good enough. Peace out. No, but they didn't do that. They released the hangar module and now they're actually releasing the alpha or whatever. So I'm very excited about this video. I have no idea what this is going to be about or what the game's actually going to be like. So we're going to find out right now. <laughs> Hey, it's me. If you're here to find out about the Star Atlas Sage gameplay manual, you are in the right spot. Remember, this is a draft manual released in December 22. It will definitely be changing with newer versions or even when Sage goes into DevNet and Mainnet. In the next 13 minutes, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the manual. You might want to slow it down because I'm going to be going very fast. If you want the pure, unfiltered information, the link to the Sage manual is in the description. Let's get to it. Number 1. The Sage Roadmap The Star Atlas Sage module is split up into different phases, the tech demo through to version 0. Okay, wait a second, let's take a look at this first, uh, real quick. Okay, so they got a roadmap and they've got, and they're telling us here what's going on. Web optimized ship models with metadata metrics. Okay, faction security zone. Star-based construction, localized cargo management, planetary resource extraction, fleet formation, faction central space stations, star path network, R20, I don't know what it is, R4 crafting, galactic map with 51 star systems. Okay, so they're targeting 51 star systems. Tier 1 through 5 star bases, docking on docking, asteroid belt, resource extraction, star-based crafting. I'm completely lost, you guys. I have no idea what's going on right now. <laughs> All of this stuff just is just like it's completely over my head. I have no idea what's going on. Which is the P2P economy through to version 4, which is the high risk and... Okay, so that's the tech demo. This is version 4. So basically he's saying we got to check out this... Um, this roadmap. Maybe after this video. I don't know. This is... A it's not a long video. It's only 30 minutes long. Maybe after this video, we might check out the actual, um, the actual manual so we can take a look at the roadmap. I want to see, I, I mean, it doesn't look like the projecting any dates here. This kind of just looks like an order of what, an, an order of how things are going to be released. Um, it doesn't look like, you know, we are, we have crafting coming at the end of the year. No, it doesn't look like they're saying that. It looks like they're saying, okay, we'll probably do star path and then crafting. It's just like an order of when they're going to release stuff. Uh, V4, high risk zone and end game area, bosses and raids, territorial ownership, deep space exploration, ship destruction, mega structures, ship crafting, insurance, terraforming, stealth and scanning. Okay, deep space. Again, I'm not entirely sure what any of this stuff means, but it kind of sounds, uh, you know, standard. You know, they're going to have, they'll essentially uh, have ship destruction, then they'll, then they'll release crafting, then they'll release insurance, then they'll release, you know, deep space and all this kind of stuff. So the end game done. gameplay. Also where the politician gameplay loop gets highlighted. Lots to discover here about the roadmap, so feel free to pause and have a look, or better yet, read the full manual. Okay, so this is what this this is what the manual is is golden area game manual. This is cool. This is good. I think that this is a good idea. I think CIG should do something like this. Make a manual. Uh, I mean, CIG is working on a new play experience or whatever, uh, and that might be coming out this year in 2023. I do want to make a predictions video about 2023. I'm I'm super late on that. I know I've just been kind of you know enjoying the vacation, the time off. For the holidays and all that kind of stuff but i'm gonna get back into it. i'm gonna try to get more regular with you guys and i'm gonna give you guys my predictions but it looks like yeah this is the manual and i think that's a good thing that they you know put out because with star atlas this is real money so you definitely don't want to go into the game oh you know what's going on let me just figure it out no you don't want to do that 
if you if <laughs> if you if you're spending a lot of money to play this game in my opinion i think it's good that right out of the gate you know what's going on and i think you know that's a responsible thing to do again i think i think they're not i i it's hard for me to say that this game is not a scam but so far i'm not seeing a ton of red flags number two the golden era this section is an introduction to the golden era of space exploration. It discusses the current climate of the universe in Sage, industries, terrorists, the Council of Peace, and of course... Okay, so this is like the lore. That's interesting. That's definitely something that I want to read up on. Uh, they have the lore in the manual. That's cool. That's a good idea to help people get involved in the game. Dax. Bottom line though, get hyped. Shit's about to go down. Number three, okay. the map of Galia. Oh yeah, the Sage gameplay is- Okay, here, here, let's check this out. This is the game map. Okay, so this is the star map, essentially. This is Star Atlas's essentially- This is essentially Star Atlas's version of the star map. So we got the different factions here. I know Mud and Oni are different factions in Star Atlas. So you see those systems. Um, see the Oni system right here and the Mud system. The, the Mud is humans. And I think the Oni is aliens. And there's another one that's like robots or something. It's happening on this map called Galia. You can identify- Okay, so their universe is called Galia. Different factions and the safe zones. Oh, there's no high risk zone yet. That's in- Okay, so the high risk zone version in the four. middle. The default spawning locations start at the faction central space station, the CSS, which is free. When your fleet gets destroyed, you lose fleet cargo and you'll need repair kits to, you guessed it, repair. The empty spaces are called dark sectors, which is sometimes empty, but later on they could host star systems themselves. There are 56 star systems with a minimum of three planets each. Sometimes there are star bases to keep you busy. Okay. So, wait, what do you say? He's going fast. Sometimes there are star bases to keep you. <sighs> okay, so each system will have five star systems, including the pre populated system where central space stations reside. The MRZ will have 36 star systems for a total of 51. Okay, the number of star systems will increase over time. A star system has between four and eight planets. Okay, it's a little bit different from what he said. With the system broken up into inner ring, mid ring, and outer ring, a system always has at least one inner, one mid, and one outer. Oh, okay, so that's why he said it has at least three that are unlocked with uh, star base upgrading. Busy. Some are controlled by the Jorvik, so go get them back. I don't know what that means. Number four, starting out and the council rank system. You'll have to form a fleet to play. You'll need to allocate points. How do you get points? Level up with XP. How do you get XP? Play the game. <laughs> yeah, star, that's some Star Citizen does not have. Star Citizen does not have an XP system. I'm so glad Star Citizen does not have an XP system or anything like that. I know they're talking about skills. You know, that stuff snooze fest. 1995. It's 2023. Okay, let's get rid of that. Get rid of, no more XP systems, no more skill trees. That stuff's ancient history. Let's let's create new ways to play video games. Let's be original, let's innovate. You know. XP is so lame, but uh, I mean, I'm not going to be overly judgmental right now. I have no idea how this game is played. <laughs> <laughs> Players start out with three. That's a good meme, though. <laughs> That's a good meme. That's what I tell you. This guy's funny. I, I've seen a couple of his videos. He's good. He, he makes good privilege content. points. Gain one. Like, even if you're not into Star Atlas, I would say subscribe to this guy. His content is pretty interesting. Point with each subsequent rank and gain five points at every 10th level. Here's the level table. Okay, rank one. Okay, so you have privilege points. 50, 72, 100, 142. It's interesting scaling. 
This is how you spend your points. Calculate wisely. Though remember, you can reset for an Atlas fee. To place a certain ship size in Sage... Okay. Current fleets, max number of concurrent fleets deployed. Okay, so the privileges... Concurrent fleets, fleet size, crafting capacity, star path, pass, expedited rescue, V1 landing lights. These are the points you... I'm telling you, this is like an alien language to me right now. <laughs> As you level up, small perks are unlocked, like a T1 claim stake at level 1, access to the medium risk zone at level 5, and changing your default spawn location at level 10. More oh, okay. That's you have to be level 10 just to change your spawn location? I mean, that's what I'm telling you. Star Citizen, you just, you just go back to the, the, the screen and change your home location, you know? I think so. No, I could be wrong. I think you need to do a character reset, but you don't have to be any level to do that. <laughs> it's not. It's not a. It's not level gated. You just. You just choose your home location, or you just move your stuff. I mean, in that sense, I feel like it's more realistic. This is, you know, Star Atlas kind of. Uh, positions itself as the metaverse but in my opinion this seems more like a game than star citizen star citizen just kind of lets you do whatever you want to me that's more like what a metaverse would do you know if i was getting into a metaverse i would just you know hop in and just do whatever i want this with you know privilege points and xp and level gating that sounds like a game <laughs> that sounds like a traditional game i mean that doesn't really sound like a metaverse more perks to come number five player onboarding and the cpp you have to earn your way to playing a large ship otherwise you'll rule the galaxy early on and we don't want that that's no fun okay um ownership points to afford CPP point cost. Um, so extra, extra small. We don't need any points. Extra small, you need two. Small, you need four. Medium, you need 10. Large, you need 25. Capital, 61. Commander, 152. Titan, 376. Again, to me, that doesn't seem like a metaverse. That seems just like a game. In real life, if you're born rich, you're born rich. <laughs> you know, you don't need to be at a certain level to, to you know, do any of this stuff. Yes, there are people who own it in real life, but there are also just a lot of people who are born into it. So, it's, in, in my opinion, Star Citizen emulates that a little bit better. The reality is some people are just going to get advantages. Some people are just going to have capital ships right out of the gate. I don't personally think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think that's not fun. I think that's more fun, honestly, because then no one's telling you, you what you can, can and cannot do. As a player, you can just do whatever you want. Now, the major problem with it is that it creates this environment where there are a lot of capital ships. There are a lot of large ships. There are a lot of industry ships because basically everyone has access to it. So there is a lot of that stuff. But in my opinion, that's kind of a good thing because it just means that there's just so much more content that you can explore. You know, if there are 100 Idrises in space, then you can have a 100 Idris battle. <laughs> you know, if there are five capital ships in Star Atlas, then you're really only dealing with five people. And in my opinion, that is kind of more boring. I think it's more interesting to have 5,000 capital ships battling each other. Um, yes, that kind of affects end game, but we'll see again. Star Citizen is far from being complete. But in my opinion, being able to write out the gate, just buy whatever ship you want, get in the game and experience the content that you want to experience to me that seems more like a metaverse <laughs> again this whole situation where you're leveling this whole situation where you have to you know be have certain xp to unlock a larger ship that sounds like a traditional game that doesn't sound like a metaverse this program gives you points for the ships you own so that you can play with smaller ships and earn your way up here's the table number six risk zones Security, medium, high risk. It's pretty self-explanatory. 
Security is the noob zone. Combat and crime are a no-no. Dueling will come later and you can't lose any of your stuff. Nice. Medium is a bit more dicey. Pirates and NPCs will come for you for killing their NPC families and their children. Okay, so basically they have a safe zone where there's no PvP and you can't lose any of your stuff. And there's different levels. So as the further you go out into space, the more dangerous it gets. I think that's not a bad system. Um, right now, Star Citizen is a 100% PvP zone. <laughs> Unless you're in Armistice, which is only in cities. Uh, and so do I think having safe zones is better? No, I don't think so. I, uh, real, there's no safe, again, there's no safe zones in reality. You step outside your house, even in your house, you know, someone can attack you in your home. There's nowhere is safe in reality. <laughs> uh, so I, I feel like that's more realistic. Um, more like a metaverse. Again, this seems very gamified. This is what you get, you filthy animal. Expect PvP, bounty system possible, and you can't destroy your stuff, but you can lose it. You'll need Atlas, okay. of course. High risk is... Oh my god, you guessed it. It's high risk. Well, duh. You get near the Cataclysm, where weird sentient rocks come after you because you aren't a weird sentient rock. The size will change, no bounties, there is permanent loss of assets, and it's a free-for-all, baby. Nice. Okay, that's good. And... Listen, guys, I, again, I'm not trying to be too critical of what I'm seeing here, but I think the main reason why they're, you know, talking about safe zones and XP and all that and the other is because a lot of people have spent a lot of money on ships and different things and a lot of money is involved. So you do want to put a mechanic in place where people don't have to worry about losing their stuff. That's just reality. Um... In Star Citizen, there's insurance. This game probably will have insurance, but only difference is insurance in Star Citizen is free. <laughs> and, you know, most people at this point have lifetime insurance on every ship they own. If you don't have lifetime insurance on every ship you own, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> it's so easy to get a, a LTI token and upgrade that into the ship that you want that there's just absolutely no reason to own a ship that only has six months insurance on it. Just don't ever do that. You're wasting your time. Even if you have a starter package, you know, and that's why I tell people, use somebody's referral code because sometimes during the year, not only do you get 5,000 starting credit, but you can get an LTI ship yourself. You know, I um, recently uh bought a game package to have an alt account and i got a a free lti uh ship with that what am i gonna do with that ship i'm gonna do nothing with that ship but if you are a new backer you can upgrade that ship okay don't melt your game package because then you lose access to the game but you can upgrade that ship and then that ship will have lti now with star atlas i don't think there's an option to have on you know lifetime insurance i think you just have to pay for that so you're definitely going to want safe zones where you don't have to worry about that also cig really hasn't gone into that much detail about insurance on fps items so it, it, it's kind of a toss-up right now and again i'm not i don't work at cig i don't know what the what the thinking or what kind of gameplay they have for that I'm, I'm just kind of you know throwing out my opinion here i think that's the right move for star atlas is all i'm saying number seven the crew your ships have crew you can't hot swap them like a swingers party that's in version three things get spicy in version three y'all till the crews are useful they'll craft for you crew also determines your food consumption people gotta eat number eight the fleet management system to form a fleet you need three criteria met to disband these two criteria need to be met. To undock your fleet, you need to be above 0% HP. Don't try to cheat, please. And of course, you need points in your rank to actually have more fleets available. Number nine, fleet resource consumption. Players manage their food, fuel, ammo, and toolkits, the R4, during Sage. Each resource has a use, consuming fuel when using a star path or warping and consuming food when extracting resources or in battle. If a fleet runs out of R4 during an expedition, certain gameplay mechanics are imposed, such as the fleet being unable to move or attack in battle. That's pretty bad. The fleet also shares an aggregate fuel tank, ammo magazine, and cargo bay. 
toolkits and food are stored in the cargo bay. Fuel and ammo can be transported in the cargo bay but cannot be moved to the fuel tank or magazine while undocked. If a fleet's HP is oh, reduced to zero... That's interesting. So you, you can't reload the magazine while when you're in space. Oh, I guess that kind of makes sense. I don't think you can do... You can't do that in Star Citizen right now. Um, no, yeah, you can't do it in Star Citizen right now. The fleet is destroyed and will undergo a respawn timer. Pay Atlas to reduce the respawn timer and you can select a respawn location if you have it unlocked at a home star system. I mentioned this before, remember? Number 10. Location, Movement and Star Path Network The locations of fleets are stored on the blockchain. Opposing fleets must be in the same location to interact with each other. The map of Galea is divided into sectors and to enter a planet or star base, a fleet must first travel to the star system sector. Fleets can travel between star systems using the star path network or through dark centers. There are three modes of travel. Warp, which is non-star path, which travels over several tiles at a cost of fuel per jump and is subject to a cooldown timer. Warp, which is star path, travels directly between star path endpoints at a reduced cost of fuel and additional fee of Atlas. And the Impulse, which is the adjacent sector, which travels to adjacent sectors at a cost of fuel per movement. Fleets can exist in several locations and states, such as a dark sector, a star system sector, or a star base CSS, a planet, or even a loading bay. Fleets can also be docked, attacking, or defending. Number 11. The star Path Network Fleets can use long-range warping to travel between star systems using faction-owned star paths, which really is a fast travel system. A star path is only available for use if the player's faction owns both endpoints, which are located in a star system and are constructed using a faction-owned starbase. Only one starbase can be built per star system sector. Traveling via available star path is more efficient in terms of time and fuel compared to other forms of travel. The fuel cost for a star path warp depends on the tier of the starbase at the origin node, with travels from a higher tier starbase being cheaper than travel from a lower tier starbase. It's a lot of really good information. I mean, I'm gonna link this guy's uh, video in the uh, description below. Go check out the whole thing, watch for yourself. Um, but I think that's some pretty good information. Okay, he talked about resources. Number 12, next. resources. There's a whole bunch of resources. You get them from these places. Resources have two main characteristics that determine their emission rates, hardness and richness. Hardness is how difficult it is to mine. Inventory. Resources and crafted kind of products are stored in their I'm just gonna skip ahead a little bit, kind of um, see what he's talking about here. Localized starbase inventories and fleet inventories. All items bought on the marketplace appear in your inventory at the central space station. Localized resources must be transported back to the CSS to be exported and listed on the galactic marketplace. A starbase is destroyed, locally stored resources may have a percentage burnt. You can probably get some of it back, we'll see. Fleets have. Okay, so yeah, it's. I mean, I didn't expect it to have persistence, but it's it basically your inventory is going to be at your your star base, and if that gets blown up, you might lose some of it. Yada yada yada. I think that's a pretty good system. It makes sense, um, and I think you will be able to. Tr what he's saying there is that you will be able to transport some stuff uh, using your fleet. So that's also good. Have inventories, mostly R4 or whatever loot you pick up. Unload it at a star base. Number 15, ship selection and performance bonuses. Here's where the juicy stuff is. Pause here to see the different stats and what they actually okay. mean. Hull affects HP, shield the strength of shield generator, armor affects the armor value, warp affects the warp range, impulse affects the impulse speed, thrust affects agility, Base affects the performance of slotted missile or bomb base. Hard point affects the performance of the weapons. Counter affects the performance of the slotted countermeasure. Fuel savings affects the fuel efficiency. Repair savings affects the cost. Tractor beam affects the rate at which items are salvaged in space. Scanning affects the performance of ray balance scanner. Stealth affects the performance of ship when activating stealth. Okay, all this stuff makes sense. Um, there are. And again, I feel like CAG really needed to make a complete game design document <laughs> like that so we kind of understand what everything is and, and how everything is going to be. Again, you don't need to give timelines for this stuff, but I feel like there's a lot of players who play Star Citizen who really don't know what the gameplay is going to look like. <laughs> Ship bonuses? What? What? <laughs> 
Bro, what are you talking about, man? The Tufa and the Chi have the highest rating. Back off, they're mine. When you go up in ship class, you get these stat changes. These are the components and what they actually do. Okay, let's take a look at this too. Shield generator, shield uh, strength value, warp drive, warp distance, impulse, impulse speed, maneuvering thruster, agility value, weapon hard point, hard point DPS, missile bay, missile bay DPS, countermeasure, countermeasure DPS, hull reinforcement, armor value, tractor beam, salvage rate, radar I mean all that stuff seems like it makes Please sense. note the radar is useless until version 2 or 4. These are the modules and this is what they do. Okay, we got cargo, drone port, smuggle cargo, theater, improve improve crew morale, okay, art gallery, crew morale, repair, repairability, scanner, scan rate, data rack, scan rate rig uh increased bounty rewards so it looks like you have stat buffs by having these modules installed so like if you have a prison or a brig on your ship then you'll get paid more money when you bring in a bounty seems like a pretty simple straightforward system makes a sense um again a lot of that seems like based on XP and stats and points and all this other stuff. That's just not in Star Citizen. And I generally don't like that stuff. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I don't like XP. I don't like stats. I don't like points. I don't like this linear progression nonsense. I like horizontal progression or whatever it's called. What, what Star Citizen has right now where it's like, do whatever you want. Now, a lot of people hate star citizens uh progression system they kind of feel like it doesn't exist um but that's mainly because the game's not out yet the game has a lot of development left um again i'm not really trying to compare star Alice and star citizen the whole point of these videos is just for me to assess some other game from a star citizen player's perspective you know that's why it's called star citizen player reacts um so i'm gonna bring up star citizen when i when i talk about these videos but from an objective point of view in general i'm you know i i, I want to be able to go in in a game do whatever i want succeed fail it is what it is was that too fast? Too much information? Have you ever had a dreams that that you um you had you 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 could you do you you want you you could do so you you do you could you you want you want him to do you so much you could do anything? It's okay, guys. You got this. Let's move on. Number sixteen: <laughs> star bases and crafting. This section is huge. Star bases have tiers with different stats and bonuses. Level up a star base that have access. Again, it's more about stats, more about bonuses, more about XP. I don't care about that stuff. Um, combat mechanics. Let's look, let's look. There's a five minute timer for battles. People can join in. If you're the third faction to join, pick a side to fight on. Then when you finish, kill the other winner like a chat. I think I finally found what I was put on this earth to do. Bear my life and I will grant you three wills. Ah! There's five damage types. Energy, light, heavy, missile, and what? bolt. You know that? <laughs> I like these guys. Hey, this guy's good sense of humor, man. That's all I gotta say. I like these guys' videos. I like his style. <laughs> That's funny. Bombs are unique in that they can't do any damage to a ship. So that Bomberella or even the Unibomber is good for planets and bases, but terrible in a fleet battle. When a planet gets to zero HP, it's now fallen. And resource extraction is heavily impacted. Get it above 25% to get resources back to 100%. Here's some extra notes on combat. Okay, let's take a look at this. Okay, players will be able to select damage type. The agility of... Number 18, respawn and rescue. There's a calculation for your respawn timer. It's a function of distance, fleet rescue capacity, and council rank percentage. Bottom line, don't die. Otherwise, me and my medtech will come get you and it won't be cheap. Okay. Number 19, loyalty points and atlas. The good stuff. Loyalty points are account bound, untradeable. 
get them by doing these four things. You okay, so loyalty points. This is different from XP. Attack enemy star base and plants, defend friendly star bases, upgrade friendly star bases, contribute all four to friendly star bases. You'll get loyalty points. Now, what does loyalty points do? You earn Atlas by having loyalty points. Each faction gets. Okay, so you earn Atlas by loyalty points. It's 33% of Atlas emissions. So you get a share of what you did in that epoch. How long's an epoch? We don't know yet. <laughs> you can use loyalty points in version 0. You want Atlas utility? Here you go. You earn it based on Sage LP accrued via gameplay. Purchase assets with it off the Galactic Marketplace. Reclaim assets lost in the medium risk zone stored in star bases. You can pay for star path fees, reallocate privilege points, reduce your respawn timer, and of course in V1 you have it for land claim rent payment. Okay, so you have land claims, but you have to pay rent on those land claims. That is interesting. In Star Citizen, once you claim land that's yours, you do not have to pay rent, you own it. I don't even think you have to pay taxes. I really don't know what the tax structure is. I mean, I'm going to make a, another video about Star Citizen leaving billions of dollars on the table <laughs> when it comes to monetizing the game. I already made a, a video about mon uh, Star Citizen's monetization. And, uh, you know, in that video, I didn't cover um, how much more money CIG could be making by being more aggressive. And I want to make a video about that. CIG is not being aggressive enough on monetization. I'm going to title it something like that. I don't really know yet. Uh, but that video is going to be a banger. So uh, stay tuned for that. But yeah, th I mean, this is really interesting stuff. I think the team over there, Star Atlas, has got their head screwed on straight on the shoulders um those guys really trying to make a game and i respect that i respect that a lot number 20 the appendix we're nearly there guys claim stakes coming in version one long story short you need a claim stake to be Ooh, this is a long video well, let's listen to this first be able to extract from planets they also have tiers with bonuses and storage you start with a hub which is a t1 you pay rent don't pay it you get unstaked Upgrade the claim to put more buildings on. There's buildings now. What? These are their stats. A hub, a drill, a power plant, refinery, an ARF, a farm, repair facility, defenses, a shield generator, and a space station, baby. Here's some extra notes on the claim stakes, everyone. Remember, everyone gets a free, untradeable T1 claim stake when they first start. I mean, you gotta pay rent on it, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> uh, again, I don't really feel like this ownership if you're paying rent on it. like. You get a free claim stake, cool. Here, it, well, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta play the game, or I'm gonna lose it. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> Will, all right, my friends, that's the end of the Sage Manual. Of course, it was a brief. Unless I'm understanding that wrong, I could be understanding that wrong. It's, it's like two o'clock in the morning right now. <laughs> <It's>, you know. <laughs> I just got, you know, uh, I'm kind of loopy, so I might have, I might be misunderstanding that, but to me that seems like kind of mid. Seems kind of mid. Brief introduction. If you want the full thing, read the whole manual. Should we do that, you guys? Maybe I'll just t uh, check it out for a couple of seconds. It's he's got it here in the description. Where's that? Twitter, website, YouTube guild newsletter other resources uh, where's manual this is it i think this is it how to play star alice guide first step buy cryptocurrency no, I'm not giving you my email. <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> okay, let's see here. What is that, Alice? Watch the trailer on YouTube. Thanks. That helps out. <laughs> Join Stylus' Discord. Here's a link. Cryptocurrency. Stylus is a game based on Web3 technology like cryptocurrency. Boo. <laughs> Economy and governments that use crypto coins, Atlas and Polis. Mid boo. 
We don't like it. Slot on block tier. Blow the steps. Get started. How do I buy? How do I buy soul? How do I create a plan uh, fan wallet? How do I send cryptocurrency? How do I swap? Don't care. Marketplace. Don't care. Score. What is score? How to enlist? How about we, don't care? Doubt. What is doubt? Don't care. Flea Don't care. <laughs> showroom. What is showroom? How to create an account? How to install? Okay. Is that the what? <laughs> there are no links. Maybe this is link. Use an info. Game manual. Okay, so this is part one economics, game structure. What do we want to look at here? That's PDF. We've got to open up PDF. Mining, management resources, combat. Owning Atlas. This is a lot to read. Score versus Sage. Okay, so score is what is out now and you can play now. Um, Sage is the game world. Um, the hangar module is something completely different. As we mentioned above, the Sage economy will be entirely player driven. I like that. CAG, pay attention to that. NPCs suck. Stop giving them so much power. Okay. Give the reason give a give players and stars a reason to play. Give us sixty percent of the economy. Those are my demands. Do them now. I'm just kidding you guys. <laughs> That goes for the R4 supply as well. Players who switch from score to stage will find that they produce a fair amount of R4 through stage gameplay. They can take this R4 and subsidize the R4 course in score by filling their ships. Now, I like what's the point of keeping score around if you're gonna go to Sage? I thought the whole point of score was that it was a stepping stone to Sage. Are you telling me that you're going to keep score and sage around at the same time? That seems kind of money hungry to me. I don't feel like you need score. If you're going to launch sage, just launch sage and get rid of score. Again, I don't know how score is played. I don't know if people have a lot of money tied up in that would be really mad about the idea of score going away. But I feel like score is kind of unnecessary with if you have sage. Smaller ships. Larger ships, okay. So they're kind of talking about the yield here without Sage, with Sage. So they're saying that with Sage, you can make more money. Score versus Sage, Marketplace and Dow. Okay, neither the marketplace nor the DAO will see any direct changes come from the Sage release. There will, however, be some indirect impacts. For example, the marketplace will see an influx of new resources like Starbase, upgrading materials and ship bonus items like Seal and Boosters. Now, can you use any of that stuff in score or will it be a situation where if you buy that on the marketplace, you can only use it in Sage? Or will there be like some kind of thing telling people hey this is only available in score don't buy this if i mean this is only available in sage don't buy this if you're playing score i don't know i'm not i'm uh this video will, oops sorry this video will be five hours long if i go through this entire document but i will put this pd this the link to this pdf in the video description so if you want to read this entire manual on your own free time i would completely welcome you to do that i want to give you guys the power to make decisions for yourselves i mean i'm not here to influence what you think i'm just here to tell you what i think uh and i think that's like a better mentality for youtubers to have generally i feel like a lot of youtubers are trying to manipulate their audience i'm not going to get into that but i'm not going to do that to you guys you make your own decisions i'm just here to present you the information and uh, 
if you guys want to check out this manual i'll leave it in the description as well as the metaverse explores original video i'm gonna leave that in the description so in conclusion my thoughts are kudos to star alice team for actually making a game uh i personally don't like leveling and xp and all that nonsense i don't like games like that i've played tons of games like that i'm kind of over it at this point um i want to just be able to get and do whatever i want i feel like being able to get in a game and do whatever you want is more metaverse like than having to level and get xp and do all this stuff i feel like that's very gamified that's very 1995 and um realistically because of persistence and all the tech that cig is building i feel like stasis is going to end up feeling more like a metaverse than this game um you'll be able to make money in this game though which will attract certain types of people and i mean that's all i really have to say about it for now uh we'll see right now i think the game looks good but only time will tell um a lot of their community has kind of uh gotten hit hard from the ftx stuff and you know you can't really talk about this project without talking about what happened there and um they addressed it uh i think this guy he posted a video he was actually in montoya's video when montoya talked about it montoya actually showed a clip of um him reacting to the whole ftx situation i feel like the community is going to bounce back from that i don't really think that's going to be the end of this game or the end of this project people saying you know style has died i don't think that's the case um i think they just have to continue proving themselves and you know people will come that's essentially how it works you know you put out a good product people will notice and people will enjoy it uh is it for me heck no <laughs> uh i i don't want to feel like i have a second job i barely have enough time to make these videos uh, i i'm sure as heck not gonna have time to play star atlas and star citizen and starfield and dune or hogwarts legacy or whatever the heck else is coming out i don't have time for that i'll, I'll probably buy hogwarts legacy play for four hours and then uninstall it <laughs> realistically realistically i've sold time to do stuff that i feel like uh this star atlas game is a huge investment and if you are a classical mmo player you might like star atlas more than star citizen and it, because it has a a, a a way for you to actually make money make a living it might be worth the time investment and again there are some people who you know maybe they don't have a lot going on and they have a little bit of disposable income and they want to spend their disposable income and potentially make more money and work less and, and just kind of do their thing and for them i think this game is going to be great i think they're going to enjoy the game a lot um but we kind of saw how toxic that can be with Axie infinity i mean these people have no lives and yes they are making a living playing a video game but it's just I, I just feel like it's a very interesting space and it's so early and it's constantly evolving you know i think the healthiest reaction the healthiest mentality to have along something like this is just wait and see you know i i not a financial advisor this is not a financial advice but if you think this is interesting at all the only advice i can give you is just wait and see um i feel like they have enough money right now to do what they gotta do uh, i feel like if worse comes to worse they can you know get some more investments from you know other partners it might be you know rough for a little while i'm not saying that it won't be but i feel like um they have put enough effort in so far that they can get more people um excited about the project to enough to to give them a, a second chance and uh, i mean we'll see but i don't think it's dead i don't think it's it, it's it's gonna die anytime soon i think they're making the right steps to, and doing the right things to make it happen but i could be wrong if you guys agree or disagree or you know if you like pie let me know in the comments down below if you like this video hit like if you want to see more videos like it subscribe and i will see you guys in the next time salute